So for most of my videos, I walk into frame and I sit down. And if I ever stand up in the middle of the video, I'll get comments that are like, I thought Eddie was short. And then he stood up and was tall. Who knew? And it's like, I, you knew from, from just a couple of minutes ago when I walked right in. Anyways, hi. I'm Eddie Burback, and today we're talking about generations, specifically Gen Z and millennials. The reason I want to talk about that today is if you're unaware, there is a war going on between Gen Z and millennials. Pick your side and get ready to fight. Skinny jeans, side parts in your hair, Harry Potter, these are the pressing issues of our time. What are we, what are we doing? <laughs> So if you're unaware, Gen Z and Millennials have sparked up this huge argument online. And when I say Gen Z and Millennials, I mean some teens in Gen Z and a lot of older Millennials. And we're going to get into a lot of that today. But first I want to talk about what is a Millennial and what is a Gen... A Gen z -er? A Gen... Is it just a Gen Z? That doesn't make sense. So the Pew Research Center defines a millennial as someone born between 1981 and 1996. Now Gen Z on the other hand goes from 1997 to a rough like 2012 to 2015. Dividing groups of people into generations can have a lot of uses. You know, you can see economically how some generations being born at a time are doing better or worse than others. You can examine how a certain generation responds to a historical event that's new versus uh, maybe an older one that's experience more things. Listen, I'm not a science guy, so I can't tell you every good application for it, but I can tell you that it's not your star sign. It's not a personality chart. I couldn't think of a bigger waste of time than arguing about who is cool and who is lame between two generations. And we're gonna get into that, but I just wanna say really quick that I think I'm maybe one of the best people to make a video on this because I was born on November 28th, 1996, which means I was, I don't know, a little over a month away from being considered Gen Z. And I think especially people born in like 96, 97, really don't feel involved with this Gen Z millennial war that's happening online because it's just like, I don't know, I have stuff in common with both of you guys. This seems super weird. So it seems that uh, a big, a point of contention between Gen Z and millennials is that Gen Z says that skinny jeans and parting your hair to the side rather than down the middle is no longer cool. And there's a lot of um, older millennials that seem to really dislike that. So I want to introduce you to a reaction from an older millennial to this criticism that they've been getting. Hey Gen Z, you can suck it. You can't tell me what to wear. Cause I've been rocking this side part since you had Kermit on your underwear. So cute. And you can pry these skinny jeans from my cold dead ass, you hear? So Gen Z, you can suck it. You can't tell me what to wear. Oh, you guys look grumpy. You should take a nap. Ah, that physically hurt me. So what the fuck? <laughs> I really, really hated that. And it's for a couple of reasons. I think before I criticize, I wanna stress that this is not Gen Z and millennials at war. This is a select group of older millennials and a select group of young Gen Z arguing with each other like everyone's arguing. So essentially you have teenagers criticizing people in their late 20s to early and mid 30s for the way they dress, which already it's like to those teenagers, everything goes in and out of style. What you think is cool right now will not be cool in 10 years. I remember one time when I was a kid when shorts that went below your knee were a must. I saw a photo of my dad as a teenager and I said, why are your shorts so short? They look so weird. And he said, I don't know, that was the style back then. And I thought that he was wrong. Turns out I was a fucking idiot kid. <laughs> so the more embarrassing bit is older millennials that are feeling insulted by this. Why do you care if a 15 year old thinks you're cool? This is so embarrassing. Oh my God, like why would you give a shit? Your time has passed. 
You're out of your 20s. You can still be cool and older, but you cannot be the generation that's making cool stuff. You have to give that away to not even teenagers, but people in their early 20s. So it's already beyond humiliating that she made this song, um, but especially something like when she said the line, Since you had Kermit on your underwear, so cute. I love the Muppets, but they're not like a big thing with Gen Z. You know, I'm sure there are Gen Z people who love the Muppets too. Everyone loves Sesame Street, but like Kermit is not even my generation, not even really, maybe the 80s. It's like the 70s and 80s, it's Gen X. So that was the first part of the Gen Z millennial battle that I saw. And I think that song really escalated things. So let's see maybe a response from someone in Gen Z. Hopefully they'll say, hey, you're 30, that's kind of embarrassing, right? Maybe we shouldn't have this argument. Oh, Gen Z is so mean to us. What do millennials ever do to you? School shootings. Yeah, I don't care about the skinny jeans or the side part. Columbine, Sandy Hook, that's you. That's your generation. That's your trend. Whoa! <laughs> what? Okay, especially this. This argument is not only extremely disrespectful, but just so beyond stupid. First off, the thing that he mentioned first happened in 1999, which means it would be the first possible year of a millennial. When you're criticizing a generation, for everything bad they've done, you need to realize, like, I don't claim other millennials because it's literally everyone in a certain time period. It's everyone. So there are millennials that are my best friends. There are millennials that are the worst people to ever walk the earth. So grouping everyone up and attaching horrible things that happen to their whole generation is so weird and tribalist and bizarre. It's just like, these are very tragic things that happen and what, you're frustrated with who? What millennials are you, who, who's the enemy here? You know, millennials have some goddamn nerve logging onto this app, talking shit about Gen Z, this fucking app that we allow them to be on. When we're doing the work they were supposed to be doing, baby, y'all were supposed to save the climate, starting revolutions and shit. What did you contribute? Mumford and Sons? A craft brewery on every corner? A fucking goddamn reboot of every movie in the 90s because you wouldn't shut the fuck up about missing it so much? When they weren't even good in the first place, you just peaked when you were eight years old. So this person seems to be Gen Z, but a bit older, which confuses me on why she is so uh, aggravated at millennials. Because I'm sure people a couple years older than her that she knows from school are millennials. And the funny thing about what she said is everything was wrong. Isn't that fun? Like everything was wrong. <laughs> Let's start off with Gen Z allowing millennials to be on TikTok. Millennials are the age range to make TikTok. Millennials are the ones who made these apps. And so again, not that I'm crediting it to millennials because that's everyone. If you're on Gen Z, you don't allow someone to be on something that they made. That seems simple. When we're doing the work they were supposed to be doing, baby, y'all were supposed to save the climate, starting revolutions and shit. What did you contribute? I was at least around longer than some Gen Z people, and I don't remember a prophecy saying millennials were supposed to start a revolution or save the climate. We want to try. Name 20 senators that are millennials. Name one, is there one millennial senator? Yeah, so there's a one millennial senator and he was just elected. So already those are two things that are wrong. Then all the final things she lists are things that uh, would probably be Gen X because millennials can't afford economically to open up a craft brewery. So it's like, if you take a moment to think about this battle, you already see the seams in everything everyone's talking about. And for real, like to both sides, what are you so angry about? What did either side do to, I don't understand. Why are we so angry at each other? It doesn't make any sense. There's a really interesting section of this battle and it's people who are around my age that are uh, not sure how to feel. People call it like a zillennial. None of it's real. So that's why uh, people are confused. When you are like, hey, Gen Z is criticizing millennials, but I don't feel like that's me. It's because it's, it's all made up. It's just that we picked a year and it's all made up. I also delayed making this video by a day and I am, I'm not glad that I did because there's one more addition 
to what I'm reacting to, and I'm not happy about it. I want to start off by saying I apologize for showing you this, but it, it has to be shown. So here we go. What? Gen Z's trying to what? Cancel Eminem. Gen Z's trying to cancel Eminem? Honey, that's cute. Listen, little kitties, let me make this quite clear. This man was around even before you were here. So what, you're all mad because the man was a lyricist while all your rappers are a mumbling gibberish? So I hated that. What would compel someone to make that? Why would someone make that? Who, why do you have a like this blind loyalty toward Eminem? He doesn't need you. Eminem wasn't like, fuck, I don't know what to say to Gen Z. You mind picking this up, Sarah? <laughs> My bad, I made up a name as Sarah. Her name is Cassie. So I was far off. <laughs> I just want this to stop before it gets cringier. I think definitely the cringe is mostly coming from people who are upset about the millennial criticism. So I guess millennials, but I don't wanna say it's the millennials cause it's not. But all of the statements I'm seeing from Gen Z criticizing millennials are like baseless and, and weird. And it's again, it's like, it's everyone. You know who's a millennial? Me. You know who's also a millennial? Kim Jong-un. So like, how could you be like, yeah, millennials wear skinny jeans. I don't think either of us do, but that's probably all we have in common. <laughs> Gen Z, Jake Paul's in Gen Z. You know who else is in Gen Z? Children. Do they have a lot in common? Well, probably, yeah. Mentally, probably, yeah. So essentially, I think my final message is if you are a teenager that is feeling very, you know, angry about this Gen Z millennial stuff, one, styles change. You get less cool as you get older. Your peak coolness is your mid 20s. And then it's downhill after that. I have a sister who's older than me. I'm cooler than her. I'm sorry. I'm, it's just the fact because I'm 24. And to my older millennials, this small fraction that is reacting in this way. Stop it. It's humiliating. You're an adult. Who cares? They have to go to study hall still. And you're worried about what they think about the clothes you wear? Drop it. Drop it now. It's, it's so embarrassing. So thank you for watching this video. Also, I mentioned in my last video, you know, the whole uh, twin thing that I have a twin brother, Tony. We're actually making a YouTube channel together. And I don't think our first video will be ready just yet, but I will be linking the channel down below. If you like video essays on movies and games, please subscribe. We're gonna be making content on there and I'm really, really excited about it. So if you could go support me there, I would absolutely love it. Thank you if you do. Also, just so you know, I'm not wearing skinny jeans. Well, look, I'm not wearing skinny jeans. I truly am a zillennial. Don't look at my ass. The chair is rotating on its own. Do not look at my ass. Now a word from our sponsor. It's sponsor time. Like I just mentioned, uh, I want to thank Surfshark VPN for sponsoring this video. Thank you, Surfshark. I am going to do this entire ad. This is, a, this is going to be a Guinness Book of World Records. A YouTuber doing an entire ad while standing on a chair. Surfshark is a virtual private network available as an easy to use app and browser extension that basically lets you place your laptop or phone anywhere in the world really high up. <laughs> Allowing you to access the internet as if you were in another country. And that's a big one for me, guys. Uh, I'm sure you've seen this. I, a YouTuber mentioned this before, but you can use a VPN. Oh, shit. You can use a VPN to bypass certain country um, restrictions for like things like Netflix and Canadian Netflix fucking bangs, dude. And so you can use that for current streaming services that you already have. Uh, so that's cool. Another cool thing is that you can use Surfshark to uh, protect you on public Wi-Fi. I've dealt with issues with public Wi-Fi before. It is, it is a, a cesspool for hackers. So um, that's also a really huge benefit because public Wi-Fi is dangerous. So you want to stay protected there. I really think it could do anyone some good. 
to get a VPN. So uh, go to surfshark.deal slash Eddie. Uh, enter promo code Eddie with a Y, E-D-D-Y, for 83% off. For 83% off, goddamn. And three extra months for free. That's surfshark.deal slash Eddie. Code Eddie for 83% off and three extra months for free. Thank you, Surfshark, for sponsoring this video. I'm going to get off this chair because I'm afraid that I'm going to fall. <laughs>